we ask ourselves on this Sabah Sabah day, is it still a democracy? Now, a latter day um, men and women, by this time young, the Gen Cs, have taken this a step further. As we commemorate Sabah Sabah, which is itself not even a national holiday, in as far as I'm concerned, if one was to ask me, this Sabah Sabah should become a national public holiday. Um, because it is so significant. This is, as I said earlier, um, the struggle uh, that brought Constitution 2010. But this struggle now has been heightened by the Gen C revolution. The Gen Cs uh, are both on the streets because in Sabah Sabah and Kamukunji, those men and women were on, a lot of them were men by the way, <laughs> uh, we don't mean de demean our ladies, but it comes to a time when uh, that time a lot of men came out. But this time it's a lot of young women who are online, online and on the streets. We said during the funeral service of uh, the first one to fall, um, young man Rex Masai fell at 29. And we have realized between Rex and the young man Onyango was 12 years, a lot of them are young people uh, between the ages of 18 and 23 or thereabouts. And so they have carried the struggle of Sabah Sabah. And today as they gather in the streets of Nairobi or wherever they are, we want them to know that Azmio Laomoja, one Kenya leadership, stands with them as indeed we stand with all Kenyans. But we must also ask some basic questions. We had uh, uh, demonstrations last year where we lost about 75 Kenyans. And the demonstrations on the cost of living, the high cost of living. And my brother Eugene will bear me witness. When we met as National Dialogue Committee, we had itemized item number one for discussion, the high cost of living. That was very important to us as a Zumeo. But Kenya Kwanza said, said, no, 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 no. It is your business as government. You will not discuss. And eventually said, fine. Then we went on to the other issues, the culmination of which was the draft bills that are now lying in the National Assembly. We think that uh, um, the low-lying fruit out of those discussions is the IBC uh, Amendment Bill 2024, which William Ruto has promised to sign into law. We say that this should be done expeditiously on this Sabah Sabah day so that we can have the process get underway of coming up as soon as possible with a new IEBC. Because the country right now is at a crossroads. This is not uh, a thing that we think should be delayed for even one extra day. Allow us also to uh, really commend our leaders in the Senate. The whole Senate. I saw for the first time Azumio and Kenya Kwanza talking the same language at the floor of the Senate when they refused to go on recess because the country was burning. What happened on the other side? <laughs> the National Assembly. I think it was a tunnel that helped them get away from young Kenyans, running away from their own youth. The and the ambulance. Some of them, I'm told the speaker, escaped in an ambulance. <laughs> and some of them tried to access vigilante house and the police for once told them, no, 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 the GNC is on you. And you may have seen them escape by helicopter atop the KICC. What a shame. Running away from your own people. But the Senate has stood firm and asked for, for once for accountability in support of the agenda by Gen C. So we, Mishmoa Senator Ambua, who is the Deputy Minority Leader in the Senate, for as meal, we thank you and your team and even those others like Bonnie Alwale, 
And even I saw Cheruyo apologize. <laughs> it is apology time to this country. So this Sabasaba day is very significant in this country. Very, very significant. Um, of course, uh, when it happened in the 80s and 90s, it gave way to the um, doing away with article, amending the constitution, the famous section 2A, to allow for multi-party democracy, which is what we are today. This time, the GNC has got William Ruto to do away with Finance Act 20, 20, Finance Act 2024, and also Finance Act 2023, which is still operational. Some of us hold the view that, um, for example, the housing tax is a slash fund. We have said it that we have said that before. The corruption continues unabated. A lot of monies get collected and uh, no account no accountability with regard to how they use their monies. The problem some have said in this country is not revenue collection, but the consumption levels, the opulence. Uh, the greed that has been demonstrated by leaders. The inexplainable nepotism in this country. Additional to corruption, nepotism, tribalism. But the GNCs, congratulations, they have come up now with a country that we can say is getting detribalized. Because if you want to annoy the Gen Cs, you, you, you talk about, to them about your, your tribe. <laughs> so this is a big achievement. And, and the days of transparency are ahead of us. But before that happens, um, there's a lot of work to do. And we have come to Meru to tell our brothers and sisters that the struggle continues, a luta continua. Um, even before we go to church and meet the people in Lari and, and also in Makutano later today. My colleagues can, uh, can add something. We, we had wanted a, a, a written text, but I think we have given a summary of what we wanted to do. We say justice, we were saying justice for Rex, Masai, but not just for Rex because it was the first one to fall this year. The 75 of them who fell last year and whose families are still distraught with grief. Justice for them as well. We say the people, men and women, um, who have responsibility over these deaths, still, and we know them, we have called for their res resignation, and the responsibility begins from the very top. We are not talking about 75 now, 41. You're looking at a total of excess of 100 Kenyans who fell to the police bullets. Task, for, uh, task force to look at the debt situation in the country is unconstitutional. And we know that um, those who have been asked to serve in that uh, task force will have taken note. The Office of the Auditor General is the constitutional office mandated to be able to deal with this matter. Again, as Peter Monya said, cosmetic changes will not do. Uh, when uh, the youth engaged uh, uh, Ruto on the X space, he undertook to do several things, maybe even to reshuffle his cabinet. Kenyans are saying, whether you reshuffle your cabinet or not, the problem is not the new or the old cabinet of William Ruto. It is Ruto himself. This is what the youth are telling you. This is the way forward is to have IBC in place. We repeat, then call for a snap election. And what happened in the UK the other day will surely happen in Kenya. Complete wiping out of a corrupt regime and what is about to happen in France will also perhaps continue. Change is everywhere.
We've been cautioned. Where are you giving us this? Yeah, we go for a farm. Oh, can we go for a We just keep it here. Are we all here? Who was that? What is this? Ah, no way. Okay, me. Eh, I don't know. Why should I hold it? Ah, I corona, eh, corona, tuana, mugeni. Ah, thank you. Um, this morning, we are very happy to be in Meru town. Kaili sana. Kaili sana. Eh.